Hello, my name is Matt Boguet. I'm the Director of Technology at Ambassador. And uh, as a tech leader, I wanted to offer a few predictions and uh, insights into what we can expect in the coming year um, with the prevalence of AI and large language models um, and how that relates to our development workflows. So I think that uh, AI is a topic that is on most of our minds. Uh, we ask questions like, how will we use it? Uh, is this thing a fad or will it replace me as an engineer? Uh, on top of that, uh, I work in the dev tools space uh, where a lot of our concerns as engineers are, how can we enhance um, and improve our development process through the use of uh, tools that can help automate tasks and uh, make ex abstractions for things. Um, so in light of these concerns, uh, I will talk about how I think AI is here to not replace us as engineers, but instead to give us more powerful development tools. So in 2025, I think we can continue to see more LLMs uh, land in the market. There's a lot of competition right now uh, with, with various uh, LLMs, and each of them have their own unique strengths, uh, offering things like larger context windows or better abilities to handle corner cases or supporting different input types um, beyond just text. But we as developers, uh, we're used to and accustomed to using multiple tools in our normal development workflows. Things like IntelliSense and our IDEs or tools that help run static code analysis or even creating something like a mock server. So I think that rather than developing a single powerful AI to execute this entire development workflow, I think instead we're going to start to see um, the infusion of AI into our existing tools with our existing workflows. So for example, um, I'm working on such a tool called Blackbird uh, that uses AI to generate an open API spec. Now there are a lot of tools out there that can help you create open API specs, but I think that um, if we start to infuse AI into these tools, we can arrive at these high quality outputs uh, that much faster. Furthermore, I think that as more LLMs enter the market, we're going to start to see more competition and more competition should lead to cheaper prices. And with cheaper prices, I think that we'll not only see more AI features in proprietary software, possibly we can start to see more AI features in open source tools as well. So I think that developers and teams who take advantage of uh, this this AI uh, infused tooling will see massive benefits in both time saved as well as uh, quality business outcomes. AI is not something that can magically replace us as engineers, but I, instead I think it will be more of a helpful assistant. Hi, I'm Courtney Mackey, the VP of Product and Engineering at Andela, and my prediction is the fractional workforce is going to start to grow in a big way. We can expect to see more fractional or part-time C-level and management roles as companies look to contain costs or are trying to figure out which type of long-term talent hire they really need, or they might only need someone for a short-term assignment. I think startups and fast-growing companies are going to drive this trend as these experts fit the exact needs for multiple companies at once. I also believe fractional rules will become more common at the individual contributor level as well. I think the pandemic really accelerated this trend as workers, you know, including folks at the management level, became accustomed to just having a lot of flexibility in their work as most of it was remote. And they figured out how to become more productive, especially with the help of all of these AI productivity tools that have sprung up. And now they can effectively work multiple full-time jobs at once. As workers with the right skills become more and more scarce, companies will have to adjust for this going forward. Finally, I also think with AI in the mix, co-pilots are gonna become part of the fractional workforce as parts of jobs become outsourced to AI. Um, maybe that's a little bit further off, but that's my prediction. Hi, my name is Corey. I'm the VP of Research here at Crowdbotics, and here are four predictions that we have about AI going into 2025. Now, we are really focused on how AI gets applied and used within the software development lifecycle, so all of these are kind of within that same genre. Uh, so the first one is AI acting as the first draft engineer. You know, today, a lot of projects, especially software projects, struggle to get out of that, even out of the gate, that zero to one phase. 
Uh, and AI has a lot of opportunities in being able to help, whether that's writing requirements, eliciting requirements, setting up and writing initial draft code to where you can validate these ideas. Uh, so we believe there's gonna be a huge explosion of that coming on the scene. The second one is generative AI kind of moving from adolescence into early adulthood. And what we mean by that is this technology um, becoming more enterprise grade, meaning that it's able to adapt to things like, you know, security, um, you know, data governance, model governance, uh, deployability, you know, um, adaptability, things that, you know, the enterprise requires. And today it doesn't really do that. It's still kind of like up and coming. There's a few little ways to do it, but in 2025, a lot more proliferation of this technology being able to used in the enterprise that apply to enterprise rigor. And that kind of moves it from adolescence into early adulthood. And then the third one is around agentic workflows. This is everywhere in the news. We actually are really huge believers in this. We use this quite a bit ourselves, but this idea of being able to string together multiple models to be able to solve really complex tasks uh, is something that's gonna be coming on the scene very hard and already is out there and has a lot of empirical research proof to show that it does work. Uh, and then finally, number four is this idea of smaller, better models. Uh, so today, a lot of things are ran through large frontier models. Uh, but coming in 2025 is this idea of having a lot more smaller models that are able to be one ran much more cost effectively they're more flexible you're able to deploy them like all the way out at the edge whether that's on device uh, or in data centers around the world uh, but that idea of having smaller models that are better at certain tasks uh, will give it much more cost effectiveness when you're running these things at scale uh, within the enterprise and kind of around the world uh, so that is four predictions that we have for AI moving into 2025. I'm Ali Shea, the Chief Product Officer of Graphient. Looking ahead to 2025, this is going to be a very dynamic and engaging year. I have quite a few predictions about what will happen, especially in the network infrastructure space, because the space of connectivity that connects the world of AI, the world of data, the world of applications is where the transformation will be needed to prepare us for the world of tomorrow. Looking ahead to 2025, we see that there is going to be a transformation in network infrastructure to focus on AI capabilities and building the networks that can support the movement of data from anywhere to anywhere. This will require a focus on transforming our network infrastructure from point configurations and manual setups to be dynamic, programmatic, and facilitate business-to-business -business data transfers so that we can accelerate the deployment of AI in our industry. We see that there's going to be a need to have a lot more focus on regulatory compliance as we adopt technologies that are deployed across multiple clouds and exchange data to accelerate the adoption of AI. In 2025, companies will have multi-cloud network solutions and they're going to need to meet data sovereignty rules to make sure that the data, their critical asset, resides and is transported in well-regulated manners. This is where seamless connectivity with secure data transfer controls across cloud environments will be necessary. We are about to enter a world where post-quantum encryption capabilities have been ratified and we are going to see an adoption of deploying new encryption methods into our businesses. This is necessary not only to protect our critical data assets as we build new applications and new services against threats that are evolving to break prior encryption standards. But it is also a time where the use of data to train AI will require further inspection and assurances that our data is protected. CIOs, network folks, risk folks, everyone across the corporation will have to evaluate their security strategies to make sure that their network infrastructure is set up for this post-quantum world and to make sure that their data is well protected.
For the IT industry, 2025 promises to be one of the most disruptive years in my long experience. In addition to the scramble to implement LLM and AI models, enterprises are desperately realigning their virtualization strategy. These two critical priorities have a high degree of uncertainty because there's no clear right way defined yet, and that will make 2025 a bumpy year for IT. Unlike past innovation waves, these trends require more than just acquiring new skills. They are challenging some long-held assumptions about what you buy and why you buy it. So let's dig into that. First in AI, I believe that enterprises will see substantial ROI from their AI investment, meaning that it's easy to justify both time and money investments. But IT leaders can waste a lot of both by doing the wrong things. Second, the same risk is true for VMware replacement. IT leaders may want to reconsider replacing VMware with another virtualization platform, but at RackN, we believe that bare metal Kubernetes is the natural migration path because it simplifies platforms and enables improved AI integration. The common thread here is that enterprise IT needs to get smart about bare metal physical infrastructure really quickly. Companies that can navigate these changes will be well positioned for success. Unfortunately, bare metal expertise remains hard to come by, and that I don't expect to change anytime soon.